Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am super excited to be here with one of my favorite people in the entire world, and you're going to fall in love with her too. Hmm. And I don't use that word love easily, but with Jennifer Love, yes, that is her last name. It's impossible not to use the word love in many, many different ways. Hmm. Um, So who is Jennifer Love? She is a wealth alchemist a money therapist, and the CEO of the Living Wealthy Institute. She's also been a business coach of mine, a mentor to me, a trainer to me, an inspiration on so many different levels for me, shifted my life in ways uh, we don't even have time to go into here today. (laughs) Just know that you really, really want to pay attention to this podcast because you're going to get gems from Jennifer Love. Welcome, Jennifer. Thanks, Kathy. So good to see you. So Jennifer, I know that you have lived an amazing life. And um, if you, if anybody is not, is just listening to this podcast and you think, hmm, wonder if I should go, you know, watch this on YouTube. If you want to see one of the most beautiful women in the entire world, uh, yes, go look on YouTube <laughs> because Jennifer is literally one of the most beautiful women, both inside and outside out Mm. that I have ever had the privilege of getting to know. Mm. Um, And so Jennifer, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm very guilty of this trying to break this habit. But when I see people as gorgeous as you, as put together as you are, um, who has an amazing, who has multiple amazing businesses, um, I think they have it all. But you didn't start out by having it all. So um, would you just jump in wherever you want and tell us a little bit about you and how you became who you are today and how you are able to help many, many other people, especially women, uh, learn how to live wealthy also? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're right. It didn't start out that way. Um, I'll take you back to the three-year-old me, Kathy. And the three-year-old me, my father was um, a successful entrepreneur. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. We lived in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I was born in California, but we moved to Oklahoma. And this particular afternoon, um, I was standing in the dark hallway and I was listening to my parents fighting behind their closed bedroom door. Yeah, I could hear my father punching holes in the walls. and before I knew it, my father's storming down the hallway past me out the front door of the house. And I turn and I look at my mom and she's sitting on the bed and she's crying. And so I go to her, I crawl up on the bed and sitting next to her are the cut up credit cards. And Ugh. yeah, she looks down at the little three-year-old me and she says, your dad's leaving. He's not coming back and we don't have any money. I was like, well, that's a lot to lay on a three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. And and so what what is interesting to me about my story, this story in particular, is what I began to make that mean. Right. And this, and we're all doing some version of this in our life. Right. So I, I began to make this mean, oh, I'm not lovable enough for my father to want to be mm. in my life, or I'm not good enough for my father want to want to pay child support and help us out. So we went from being, you know, living a rich life. I had this huge canopy bedroom, you know, like the whole thing to, you know, living in poverty for a while and moving into what we call the rat house and the ant house and living on food stamps for a period of time. Um, and really watching and witnessing my mother become financially disempowered. And so how that began to express out through me was, well, I'm going to prove that I'm enough. I'm going to prove that I'm lovable. Know anything about that, Kathy? Yeah, <laughs> you know the, I do. The proving you've, energy. Helped <laughs> you've helped me work through a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you. 
And so, and so, you know, I began really leveraging what is my number one strength on the strengths finder 2.0 test, which is being an achiever. I'm really good at going and getting stuff done and uh, it just comes naturally for me. So I did. So I was like, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go grow those businesses. I'm going to prove that I am worthy enough. I'm going to get all the credibility. I'm going to grow the wealth. I'm going to you know, build the businesses. I'm going to do all these things. And so I began to do it from that energy, from that place. And I did, you know, I had the properties, I had the money, I had all the stuff, all the, the press, you know, accolades, la, 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 except that there was this really pivotal moment in my life where in my thirties, right. I'm, I'm standing and I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, why is it that I, I don't feel any better. I don't mm. feel good enough. In fact, I feel, and I've now call it, I feel emotionally bankrupt. Because oh, I yeah. spent all of myself working two nights a week, you know, or not sleeping two nights a week, I should say, not two sleeping two nights a week, drinking two pots of coffee a day, just so I could keep going. Right? That's that's deep, deep <laughs> undernourishment. You get you you keep doing that for a period of time and you get to a place of deep, deep undernourishment. And, and I really found myself in this place of emotional poverty where I had the stuff, but I didn't have the stuff on the inside. I didn't have the joy. I didn't have the freedom. I felt like a prisoner inside of my own life. I felt like a prisoner. Mm. To, I felt like a prisoner to the not enoughness story. Right. And so it was a time where I had to really stop and say, wait a minute, there's more to this whole being wealthy thing than just chasing money. Cause chasing money isn't going to make me any better any better of a human, any more free in my life, any more joyful, because that all starts with just what's happening inside of me. In fact, I kind of laugh now because I've gone back to my roots, you know, becoming the money therapist that I am today in the wealth alchemist. And, you know, we spend as a society, as humans, we spend the majority of our time on money systems, you know, on money organization, on making money, on investing money, you know, on maybe, maybe for some of us, we're talking about economics, the micro macro of it, but you know what, Kathy, that only accounts for 10% of the money equation. 90% of all of our financial decisions are being made based on what's happening for us in the emotional and psychological aspect of ourself. So we've, we've got it all, we've got it all wrong. <laughs> mm, we got it all yeah. backwards. We got it all backwards because what I have come to find for myself, as well as, you know, in the work that I do, is that when we actually spend the time in our psycho-emotional self and in, in freeing ourselves of all the things that are clogging us, all the fear, you know, oh, I'm not going to make, I don't have enough money, ah, like the stories, right? All the shame. I, di I didn't feel good about how I had even made the money that I had made. I, I felt some shame in some of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the anger that we often experience around money, whether, you know, it's like, someone's not giving me enough money. I'm not, you know, I'm not getting what I should deserve. I become resentful. And then there's angry, even at clients, my goodness, like we're doing this stuff all over the place. Right. So we're being clogged up by all these things that are actually impacting our ability to make healthy decisions. In fact, when we make a decision about money from a place of fear, what do you think happens? Uh, it, it doesn't go well. The, the money dries up or it it, go well. more money goes away. Mm, that's thing right. comes in. That's yeah. right. The flow of money stops. But when we actually begin to unclog ourselves, you know, really what, what I do, it's like, I'm an emotional colonic, right? I'm helping people unclog themselves. <laughs> Get the plumber. Oh in. my God. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I want to add that to your bio. The emotional colonic. Okay. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> and, and it's from, and it's really from this place of being unclogged. You know, it's, it's the law of subtraction before we can get to the law of attraction. And, and that's an important thing that we're not really talking about in society yet, right? 
No, no, no. We want to focus on all of the manifesting. Great. I'm all about manifesting. I'm going to talk about manifesting in just a moment. I'm all about the manifesting, but we can't really truly attach to what it is that we truly want or desire from a healthy place inside ourselves if we're all clogged up. Because instead, what we're doing is we're attaching to things in our life or you know outside of ourselves from a place that's being driven by fear and anger and shame or other things. That's not mm-hmm. a healthy attachment. Do you know what happens when we manifest from that place, Kathy? Nothing good. Mm. Nothing good, yeah. right? So we want to actually get into the law of subtraction. That's the unclogging ourselves before we actually get to the law of attraction, where we're manifesting our heart's desires. And that is truly possible. Yeah. So how can you subtract? Just I know it's probably not super fast for you to share, but any tip, any insight yes. for even how to yes. begin to subtract? Yes, yes. Well, this comes from this place of... Um, becoming aware, right? Like what go foraging inside yourself, like unpack Mm -hmm. what is running the show. So, so, you know, what is begin asking questions like, what am I afraid to look at in my relationship with money? Because I don't want anyone to know, or what am I avoiding in my relationship with money and why? What do I feel shame about? What are the things that I'm not saying in my life? What am I angry about, but not talking about, right? Like there, Mm -hmm. there's, there's so many things that we need to begin to ask ourselves and get really real with ourselves about asking the hard questions, taking a sobering look at what's actually going on inside our soul, right? And from that place unpacking, then it's like, okay, well, we can, we can begin to see there's a whole um, process I use with, where we, we log for, you know, two to four weeks. What is your unwholesome, judgmental, inner critic self saying to you about your relationship with money? Track that for two to four weeks, and you're going to see some patterns showing up. You're going to see, wow, there's some, there's some stuff running my show here. And the fun part about it, when I get into workshop with folks on this, it's like, we can actually then begin to decipher, is that true or not true? Mm -hmm. You know, I find Kathy, when we do that exercise, that oftentimes more than 50% of those things that you're saying to yourself are not even true. Some of them aren't even yours, Mm -hmm. even you've inherited them, right? Mm -hmm. The ones that are true, guess what? We can compost those. There's another side to that. And so we can begin to really share away what's not true and begin to compost what is true and see what's actually there on the other side of that. When we step into that, we begin to metamorphosize. We begin to then release. That's when we can start allowing. That's when we can begin to forgive. That's when we can actually really allow ourselves to grieve. That's when we can come back and access compassion. I I use this um, little rose quartz. You can see this rose quartz Mm -hmm. ball. I love beautiful. rose. I love rose quartz because it's a it's a beautiful symbolic reminder of compassion and love. And boy, Kathy, we're looking around at this world right now, and boy, do we ever need some compassion and love, do we? Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we do. Yeah. More I love that you've been sitting there holding that rose quartz ball. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So so we need symbols. To, to help us come back to finding the compassion within ourselves so that we can empty ourselves out. Whole series of empty ourselves out practice, right? Like one, one of the examples of this, I'll give a little tip here. When I sit down to do my, my gratitude in the morning, you know what? I'm not looking for all the things that are all so wonderful in my life. I mean, I'm grateful for those too, but you know what I'm actually mm-hmm. doing? I'm actually going harvesting for the lessons gosh, where am I uncomfortable in my life or in my body? And what is that pointing to me and how I'm out of alignment and what it's actually telling and communicating and trying to teach me right now? Gosh, I'm grateful for that lesson. Thank you. Because now I can see, now I can actually choose again for for how I want to be in alignment in my life, come back into integrity in myself about how I'm making financial decisions in my life, right? 
Yeah. Um, so emptying ourselves out and coming back to some of these practices become really important. And from that place, then we can flourish. Then our life begins to bloom because we've planted the important seeds. Then we can get into this integration and integration practices, right? Where we're acknowledging, we're aligning, we're healthfully attaching, we're accepting the truth of what is. And we're attracting then from that place because gosh, when we're in alignment, that's the vibration we want to be attracting from. Right. And so, yeah. and so then, you know, like from this place of being opened and emptied and surrendered and, and this place of like allowing, that's the place we want to manifest in. And from that, when we begin to fully embody that, that's when the yield happens, right? The yield. I love this term in the financial term, right? It's like the, the harvest, it's the rate of return of what we're getting back for what we've put in. Are you a healthy wealth steward? Are your be financial behaviors aligned? Are you doing money dates on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis? Are you having the hard look at what your numbers are communicating to you? And then making decisions in a healthy place, not from fear, from trust about them, right? Are you unpacking that inner critic? thought process about what's happening inside your mind and all that noise and quieting it down and actually coming back the, to the truth of who you are mm -hmm. and making decisions about your finances based on your values, not based on fear. Right. And are you, mm -hmm. are you being driven by that shame or are you actually accessing that self-trust and compassion inside yourself that opens you up to know what your truth actually even is? And are you, are you then um, making decisions about how you want to leave a legacy behind with generational wealth or how you want to grow wealth or what you're investing in your money, your time, your resources, your, what you're putting in your body. Are you doing that from a place of what you actually want to be in alignment with as a steward and a human on this planet? Gosh, mm, there's, there's, there. there's so much in the embodiment, the yielding of this, that is so dependent upon coming back to that law of subtraction. Yeah. Oh, it's wow. I never thought of it that way before, but that is really a powerful way to think about it. I love that. Mm. And this isn't like, you know, sometimes I can get really impatient, Jennifer, and I'm like, can I do this in the next, you know, five days? No, this is a longer term process because it took you all these years to get here and you're not going to unpack all of this and subtract it and then have the attraction overnight either. But if you don't start now, when you got to start? Well, the way that I like to put it, it's like, I like to go back to the garden, to nature, because I believe that nature is one of our master teachers. And, and so if we go, if we look at a seed and we plant a seed into the ground, do we then like the next day after we've watered it and there's been just a little bit of sunshine, do we like point down at the seed and we're like, Hey, listen, <laughs> you need to grow right now. Like, and we're like expecting the like sprout to just, like, pop up. Like it doesn't really work like that. So mm -hmm. we need to have the patience that nature actually shows us with ourself about our own process and timing. We all have our own process. We, mm -hmm. and, and that's been a fun thing about actually beginning to really, I've been really unpacking that with some clients this year, like really helping them see what their process is so that we can get to a place of self-acceptance. Like, oh, I'm just having my process right now. Okay. Rather than like fighting this, let me actually just embrace mm -hmm. this as part of my, what I do to, to grow and evolve. And so, and so rather than getting all tight about it and closing up, we can actually like accept ourselves in, in our own process we become more patient and actually it becomes fun. It's like, Oh, it's like this fun thing. I've got my process. Like I, I kind of like get a little irritated or I'm really skeptical. And then I, and then I need to like get out the whiteboard and start like writing it all down. And then, you know, so, <laughs> I mean, we all have our unique way of like going about unpacking these things for ourselves, especially as it comes down to our relationship with money, because money, I believe really Kathy it's, it's us. It's, it's a person. Money is a person. It's, it's literally the, the way in which we have a sense of value about ourselves and are exchanging that in the world. 
right? You've, I don't know if you've heard me, but I've, I've said this last year, like money is like eggplant. It just kind of takes on whatever flavor you pair it with. Mm. And what, what sauce are you? Are you like a scarcity marinara sauce? Or are you like, like a juicy, yummy, abundant Alfredo sauce, you know, vegan style? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. so, so, you know, it's, it's that, it's that energy that we hear people talk about. It's the energy, but it's like the energy is actually, what is the story under the story? Oh, my story was dad left. And, and mm-hmm. so I need to prove myself, but the real story was I'm fucking pissed off because dad left and I'm not dealing with my unprocessed anger. And Hey mom, that totally sucked. Why'd you just dump all that on me? Cause now I feel like I have to like help you and right. parent you. So now I'm angry about this and I'm not processing this in a healthy way. So I'm now like taking that and I'm like making a sauce out of that. That's just maybe not so good for me because mm-hmm. I'm yeah. suffering in it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a lot. I'm going to, I'm going to pause. I loved it. it. Very powerful. I loved it. That was awesome. Awesome. Um, tons of great insights and tips there. So thank you for sharing all that. Um, just, this just reminds me how much I miss being with you because you look at things in such a different way and, and yet you can help me relate to whatever it is you're saying by the analogies that you use. And the other thing that I miss about working with you on a regular basis is, um, you know, I've gone through a lot of uh, business coaches and um, therapists of different kinds, and they usually don't surprise me in how they help me uh, grow. You surprise me constantly. <laughs> I, you challenge constantly. Mm. which is amazing. I love it because mm. that's how we grow. Mm. If it's all comfortable and just like, Oh, well, here's an, yeah, I've been there, done that before. I already know what this is. This experience is going to be like Jennifer love will never have you have those kind of experiences. Um, you're the only person that I've ever been with who has gotten me without one single qualm to run naked into the ocean in front of a dozen other women (laughs) and two guys that had their backs turned. (laughs) And I still talk about that, you know, Um, and that's just a tiny little, you know, five minute glimpse of the, how you, every single time I'm ever around you, it's something surprising, something that's going to help me grow something I hadn't thought about. That is, that is, uh, amazing. So thank you for always yeah. being there. And I don't know how you keep coming up with these new ideas, like the eggplant and the garden, but uh, thank you for doing that. And I always love uh, talking with you because you always have great insights into things like this. Yeah. Well, I enjoy it myself. I think, I think the thing, Kathy, for me is that I see we, we are in a world filled with so much pain mm-hmm. and, and so much unprocessed, like, you know, I see that we're living in a world where we're emotionally impoverished. And, and so that really is a mission. I hold a mission of helping to end emotional poverty, to help us all step into living wealthy and being free in ourselves. Freedom is, is my goal. And Mm -hmm. I wish that for every single human, because it is also a gift that we've been given for free. We just forgot. We just lost access to it. We got clogged up. And my goodness, if I can live into my name of love, there isn't anything more loving to me in this life than to be able to help someone unclog themselves, to see themselves, to see the path of their own freedom. That is the most loving thing that I can do. And so that's that's why I spend great energy and time on really helping people unpack this stuff and, and, and making it fun because my goodness, money is a, it's a heavy conversation. It can be a heavy conversation. It can feel very heavy. It can feel very serious. It can feel very scary. 
It's very anxiety provoking, but if I can help make it just a little bit lighter, just a little bit easier, where we can begin having these important conversations in a safe space, that's what I see we need, right? And boy, did I get my ass um, kicked this year. Shall we talk about that? Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. If yeah. you don't mind going there, because, you know, again, back to, isn't your life always just fairy tales and, you know, uh, princess charming, you know, riding in on his horse and, you know, and you having your own castle and you being the queen of your, that's how I look at you. You're just such a queen. And when you shared with me just before we started the year you've had, I was like, whoa. Yeah. 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 So May 7th this year, we're, we're now in November 11th, number 11, 11 today. Yeah. We're in, we're in the portal on May 7th, which is a Friday. I was riding a horse here in Santa Barbara, where I live with a client and ax the horse. Yeah. He, he wasn't having it. So he bucked me off and I was not wearing a helmet. So um, I went flying off the left side of him and I, and we were in a rocky area, so I didn't want to hit my head. So I made sure to, to pull my legs underneath me. And sure enough, I went down and I landed right on my butt and I could feel the electrical shock go up my spine as I, as I was going down. And sure enough, I, I crushed my spine um, upon impact and um, the client and my and the guide got off their horses and, and my client came and she just lifted my upper body into her lap and just started like rubbing my head and my arm, which was an interesting experience for me, Kathy. This is, there's been a real learning in this for me this year in that really allowing a client, someone that I'm holding in a container yeah. to really hold me. Right. Wow. And yeah. so I really let myself be held by her, which allowed me to go in and just be with what was happening and communicate with myself and breathe and calm my central nervous system down. That was like starting to freak out. And, you know, the, the ranchers and the folks, you know, were all coming around and trying to like talk. And I just was like, I was just like in and so, you know, about 45 minutes to an hour later, the ambulance arrive and, and take me on the gurney. And I go into um, ICU uh, emergency and I'm, I'm, I, my sweetheart, John meets me there. And I tell him, I'm like, I'm having surgery. Like it's happening. And like, they're like, we don't know yet. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm telling you I'm having surgery. And um, sure enough, what had happened was I crushed my um, L2 vertebrae completely fractured the it fractured it on the other side going down into the nerves that come off of the spinal cord and wow. so all of the nerves were all messed up and so i had a 10 per, 10 chance of ever walking again without surgery oh oh and so gosh. i was told that i would going into surgery i was told that i would if i ever walked again um mm -hmm. that i would have a year to two years to get to full recovery. Mm. And I went into that surgery just knowing my truth. I knew I was like all was well in the world, that I was fine, I was going to be fine. And I went in, I was making jokes with the um, anesthesiologist. Like I went in and I was like rolled in laughing, you know, rolled in, they put me oh. in where I was laughing. And and I um, came out, I have a video of myself, maybe at some point I'll share it publicly, but I came out <laughs> and the, the surgery was supposed to be five hours, it, eight and a half hours later, um, I'm, <sighs> I'm coming out. And so my face is completely swollen. And um, upon waking, John, my sweetie comes and does a pic, like a little video of me. And I'm there because they, they put in two titanium rods and eight screws um, down my, my back to fuse it. And they fused the L2 and L3 together. And um, interestingly enough, the L2 is, a, is, is about childhood pain. It's about the, oh the pain. And so I literally crushed the childhood pain. I'm like, I'm done. Goodbye. 
<laughs> and that's over. That's over. <laughs> I'm set. And 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 so um, you know, I, I go I go out of this surgery and, and John's taking this video of me. And the first things out of my mouth is he's he's asking me, you can hear on the video. So honey, you know, how are you doing? Like what what's happened here? And I'm like, well, I just had surgery. You know, I'm I'm really lucky. Who can who can say, you know, that they've got this amount of support? And so I was just attaching to the amount of added support that I had in my back. And like, I have the strongest back I've ever had. And I'm like still half out of it, you know? And, and, and this is what I'm mm -hmm. saying. And looking back at that video now, I'm like, wow, like that is who I want to be in the world. I want to be that, yes, I can, I can cry and I can have my pain and I can be angry and I can process it right now here in the moment. But when I'm through the other side of that, that I'm actually looking at it and I'm finding the blessing. I'm finding the gift. Yeah. Right. So I go from the hospital five days in the hospital to the rehab hospital for nine days. And I'm sitting there the first day from uh, the hospital to the rehab and I'm in the wheelchair. I can't lift my arms above my head. I can't put them out in front of me to hug and I can't dress myself. I can't stand. I can't walk. I'm sitting in the wheelchair and I'm like, okay. And so the, the care technician and the nurse are in the room with me and they're going to give me the first shower, you know, in five days. And, um, they're asking me what I want to wear. And I'm sitting there at this crossroads of choice. And I thought, you know, I can either choose to be like, gosh, this really sucks. I wish this hadn't happened mm -hmm. or like, and I can't dress myself in this totally like you know, ugh. or because mm -hmm. that's an option and it would have been valid and everyone would have right. understood that, you know, right. Or I can be like, you know, I always wondered what it would be like to have handmaidens like in downtown <laughs> Abbey, that dress. <laughs> and so, and so I was like, I love I like, it. So I like that option. And so I started just what happened from, from that choice was that I started to just sit back and relax and begin to enjoy the experience. And I really mm. let them care for me, right? And, mm -hmm. and so then I began to tell them what I was having. I was like, I'm actually holding that this is what's going on for me. And they got super into it. They started calling me Lady Jennifer. So I became, oh, I love it. I became Lady Jennifer <laughs> and then they would braid my hair and then we would get all the essential oils out and they would come <laughs> and visit me in my room. Right. And so, and so then, and so then from that place, Kathy, this is where I began to really manifest because I started setting all these little micro intentions because I was told that I wasn't going to be able to walk, you know, for quite some time. If I ever walked again, I was like, Nope, I'm walking, I'm walking out of this rehab hospital off of narcotics and at a pain threshold of four or less. Now you have to understand I was on ketamine, Oxycontin, Neurontin, I was on all of like, like the big, the big boys. Okay. And even with that level of pain medication, I was having pain at a, at a level of eight to 10. Okay. So I was in massive pain and having to meet myself in that pain. Boy, did I get a whole lesson in how to be with pain through my body, like massive lesson, whole new, I've entered a, I graduated one level. I'm in another level. There's many more to go. And I'm like in an advanced mastery level of being with pain right now. <laughs> wow. That, and, that is a crazy level of pain there. And I, and I, I made the intention that I was going to walk out of there with a rollator or better, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Off of the narcotics. So, so then during that nine days, I began to wean myself off of ketamine. I started there. That was rough. Got and did it then off of Oxycontin. And, and so the day that I was leaving, they, they all lined up and, and just wanted to share like how inspired they were by my recovery and what was happening. Cause I was walking upstairs. I was like, I was walking around the whole place. Oh you know? my gosh. And that's amazing. I was blowing the doctor's minds. I was blowing my own mind, but I was just attaching to like what I needed to do to this next level of, you know, effort and like putting in, I was four, four and a half hours a day of, you know, exercise and intense therapy to get myself through it. 
and meeting myself even during and all the level of pain that you had to have that. And that's what I was going to say. You're doing that exercise. I was meeting myself in the pain and I, you know what I had to do, Kathy, I had to welcome the pain. I had to literally say pain. You are welcome here. And I, when I was in the hospital, before I got to rehab, I literally was going into where the pain was in my body, in my mind, I would go meet it. And I would actually be with it. I would tell it it was welcome in order for me to welcome it. It required my muscles to relax. So then I would be with my muscles, like, and letting them just relax, they would relax the pain would move through and then it would change into something else. And it wasn't pain anymore. Now I had to do that over and over and over again. It was exhausting. And I would pass out from exhaustion because it was all a lot of work, <laughs> but I'll tell wow. you, then I start, then I left the rehab hospital. I started setting more little micro intentions. I'm going to be able to do a, a 90 minute, you know, walk hike did. So then I had to like, okay, well, what do I need to do to actually build up so that I can do this by the certain time? Right. So then I was like, I want to be able to dance by the end of August. Okay. So that means that I need to start like really moving my hips around and I need to make sure I'm stretching myself. And like, so I'm in acupuncture, I'm getting massage, I'm doing all the things right by the end of August, I have a video of myself. I'm dancing. I'm moving my hips around. Right. I mean, I can see you right now. I'm like, be careful. You've got rods in your back. <laughs> and, and so, and so, you know, I, I did all, I did the outpatient um, physical therapy for over three months, the last day of my appointment, because we tracked progress, you know, coming in the door halfway through and in the last day and Noah, my physical therapist, he looks me straight in the eye. said, Jennifer love, whatever you are doing, he said, I am in the history of my entire career. I have never seen anyone heal and recover as fast as you have with what has happened in your body. And he said, whatever you are doing, it is working for you. Just keep doing that. And I was like, yes. And so this is what I'm talking about when I, when I'm talking about manifesting, when I'm talking about subtracting, I'm saying subtract the shit that is in the way of you blocking the pain from actually coming in. We need to subtract and actually be with our emotions. We need to be with what's happening for the sobering reality of what's happening in our life so that we can meet ourselves in that space, free ourselves in that space and choose again. The life that we actually want to design, the life that we want to live, the freedom, the joy, the 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 motion the range of motion in our life, we can have it, but we must meet ourselves in it first. That's how we manifest in our life. Wow. That is an amazing story. And you are such a good storyteller. I was, I was like, just on, on every word, and then what happened? And then what happened? Oh my gosh. And that is so validating also that you had people tell you, and you already knew it, you didn't need the validation, but it f- still feels good to have somebody say, I've never seen anyone heal as fast as you have. Well, I mean, what they if- didn't even expect you to walk at, and, and it, in two years, if you did 10% chance that you'd be walking in two years and you walked in what, two weeks, two weeks. Wow. Yeah. in two weeks, but I say all of this, not because I I'm some special, unique person. Right. And this is where I, this is where, this is where I, this is where I want to ground (laughs) this, right? I'm, I'm sharing what I did and how I did it because we all have access to this and believe me and believe you me, I came home and the second day I was home, I felt like a foreigner. And then I laid on my couch, my sweet, my sweetheart, John is just amazing. He's been remarkable in all of this. Like our relationship has actually gotten stronger because of all of this. Oh, um, so, so, so I'm laying on the couch and I am heartbroken over how broken my back is. And I sobbed for an hour straight, just sobbed over how heartbroken I felt over my back being broken and what that meant for me. And I'm Mm -hmm. in the process of really beginning to share all of that. So anyone who wants to listen to any more of my story or follow my story, come over to the nature of money show it's podcast um, and listen, because I'm going to be sharing all of this through season two. Um, 
but it, but I, I laid there and I just let myself have the emotion, the sadness, the grief of it so that I wouldn't, so that it wouldn't clog me up so that I could then get to the other side of that. And you know what, you know how I felt after I cried for an hour, Kathy relieved. Cleansed. Yeah. Cleansed, relieved. Exactly. Exactly. You gave I, yourself an emotional colonic. I did. I let myself have an emotional colonic. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so many people try to hold that inside. Oh, I can't let these emotions out and congratulations to you for just going as you always do. You know, when I was talking before you told the story, but when I was talking about the amazing experiences you give others to help them get through whatever it is that's clogging them up, um, you did it for yourself also. And I know you always do it for yourself first so that you're able to give to others. And you're just such a shining example of what's possible in this world. Well, may, may I be, we need more shining examples of what's possible in this world. That's what I believe. So yeah, I am highly motivated to be a shining example in this world and to do my work and to help others know that they can do it too. Yeah. 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 And you're Jennifer, you're so real and down to earth. Um, That's another (laughs) thing about you. That's just amazing because no matter where the person is that comes to you for help, you meet them where they are and help them grow. Well, Kathy, that's one of the things I love about you too. You know, and I think that's why you and I really enjoy each other because there's a, mm-hmm. there's a realness there's that happens. I like mm-hmm. to drop down, you know, I like to drop down mm-hmm. with folks and, and you have gotten to that place where you've really begun dropping down with yourself and you're also very real and so much fun. And that's why mm-hmm. I like hanging out with you. Yeah. Um, so the nature of money podcast, we're going to put a link to that in the show notes. Um, I'm going to be, um, as soon as we get off here, uh, subscribing to that. Cause I don't want to miss any of this story and seeing how you grow because, and you guys, you're like, well, this is an amazing story. Then what Jennifer always has amazing stories. It never stops. <laughs> <laughs> They all aren't all, you know, tragedies. Um, this one turned into a great thing, but there's always something going on in her life. Always. And, it, and you definitely want to stay tuned to it because it, it's, it's like the best uh, uh, television show, whether it's Downton Abbey that you're channeling or, you know, uh, something else. There's always something exciting going on. Um, so how else can people follow you um, and get to know about you? And if you want to talk about any other offerings that you have that, you know, if somebody's like, I need to be more in Jennifer Love's life. How do I do that? I need to work with her. I want to, you know, uh, let go of my money story and get that emotional colonic. How can people work with you? Yeah, well, I'd say if, if you're on Instagram, Come play with me on Instagram. I'm the Jennifer Love uh, on Instagram. The Jennifer Love the on Jennifer Instagram. Love. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to get a snapshot of kind of where you are in your four different wealth zones, right? Your spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical wealth zones, like what's happening for you in those? And like, oh gosh, what's the next right step for me in that? Come over to jenniferlove.com because I've got the Living Wealthy quiz, it's free. Um, and it gives you a really nice little quick snapshot of what's going on for you and what to do next. I love it. Okay. Um, we'll put all of those links in the show notes. I highly recommend, uh, following Jennifer Love at whatever level feels right for you because you will, you will be constantly surprised and happy that you have done so. Mm. Um, I know I am. So Jennifer, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your amazing stories. Well, it's always a pleasure to be with you, Kathy. It really is. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. (laughs) 